രാത്രിയിലും കർത്താവിനെ ആരാധിക്കുവാൻ ദൈവ സാന്നിധ്യത്തിൽ കർത്താവിന് മഹത്വം കൊടുക്കുവാൻ ദൈവം നമുക്ക് തരുന്ന നല്ല വിലപ്പെട്ട സമയത്ത് ഓർത്തി കർത്താവിനെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു അല്പസമയങ്ങൾ നമ്മുടെ കർത്താവിന് നമ്മളായിരിക്കുന്ന സ്ഥലത്തിരുന്നുകൊണ്ട് കർത്താവിന് മഹത്വം കൊടുക്കാം രണ്ടോ മൂന്നോ പേരിന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ എവിടെ കൂടി വന്നാലും അതിന്റെ നടുവിൽ ഞാനിവിടെ വാക്തത്വം ചെയ്ത കർത്താവിന്റെ തിരു സാന്നിധ്യം ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ നമ്മുടെ നടുവിലുണ്ട് വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നവർ ആമയൻ പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ ചില നിമിഷങ്ങൾ കർത്താവിന് മഹത്വം കൊടുക്കാട്ടെ ഹാലലൂയ 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 ഉപവാസത്തോടും പ്രാർത്ഥനയോടും കൂടെ ഈ ദിവസങ്ങളിൽ നമ്മൾ ഇരിക്കുന്ന സമയങ്ങൾ നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ വൃദ്ധാവല്ല കർത്താവിനോട് ചേർന്നിരിക്കുന്ന സമയങ്ങൾ ദൈവ സാന്നിധ്യമായിട്ടുള്ള ബന്ധത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ ഓരോ നിമിഷവും അടുത്തു വരുമ്പോൾ നമ്മളെ സഹായിപ്പാൻ നമ്മളെ ശക്തീകരിപ്പാൻ ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിലും ദൈവത്തിന്റെ കാര്യം നമ്മുടെ കൂടെയുണ്ട് അങ്ങനെയെങ്കിൽ ചില നിമിഷങ്ങൾ വായികളൊക്കെ തുറന്ന് കർത്താവെ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി ഞാൻ ആ ദൈവ സാന്നിധ്യത്തിന്റെ മറവിൽ ഇരിക്കുമ്പോൾ എന്നോട് ഇടപെടുന്ന എന്നോട് സംസാരിക്കുന്ന ആ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ശബ്ദം ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ നമ്മുടെ കാതുകളിൽ മുഴക്കട്ടെ കർത്താവിന് അല്പസമയങ്ങൾ നന്ദി പറഞ്ഞാട്ടെ ഹാലലൂയ 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 എന്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ എന്റെ കർത്താവ് എനിക്ക് നല്ലവനാണെന്ന് പറയുവാൻ ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിലും ജീവനുള്ളവരുടെ ദേശത്ത് ജീവനുള്ള ദേഹിയായി നിർത്തിയ കർത്താവിന് സകല മഹത്വവും സകല പുകഴ്ചയും സകല ആരാധനയും കൊടുക്കുവാൻ ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിലും ദൈവം നമ്മളെ ബലപ്പെടുത്തട്ടെ ഹാലലൂയ ഹാലലൂയ പടമോ ഇന്നും നല്ലവൻ ഇന്നും നല്ലവൻ യേശു എന്നും നല്ലവൻ രാവിലും പകലിലും ചേണുതൻ പാലനം രാവിലും പകലിലും ചേലൊടുതൻ പാലന ഭൂവിലെനിക്കുള്ള ദിന മാലിനില്ല കാരണം ഭൂവിലെനിക്കുള്ള ദിന മാലിനില്ല കാരണം എന്നും നല്ലവൻ യേശു എന്നും നല്ലവൻ ഇന്നാലേയും Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Eishu inna leyu minnu minnu Anni dhallavan Baramullil neeridu Neeramilla thangidu Baramullil neeridu Neeramilla thangidu Saramillennodidu ശബ്ദമുയർത്തിയെന്നും ഉലകവയിൽ കൊണ്ടു ഞാൻ വാടി വീഴാതോടുവ ഉലകവയിൽ കൊണ്ടു ഞാൻ വാടി വീഴാ തണലെനിക്ക് ഓ തണലേനിക്കു നൽകിയിടുവാൻ വലഭാഗത്തായുണ്ടു ഞാൻ തണലേനിക്ക് ശബ്ദമുയർത്തിയെന്നല്ലവൻ ും 
രാവിലും പകലി ക്ഷേണുദൻ പാലൻ രാവിലും പകലി ക്ഷേണുദൻ പാലനം ഭൂവിലേക്കുള്ള ദിനം മാലിനില്ലക്കാരൻ ഭൂവിലേടി ഹാലലൂയ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ മഹത്വത്തോട് എന്നും നല്ലവൻ യേശു എന്നും നല്ലവൻ ഇന്നാലേയും ഇന്നും ഇന്നും അന്യേതല്ലാവൻ യേശു ഇന്നാലേയും ഈ ആരാധനയുടെ നടുവിൽ എൻ്റെ കർത്താവ് എനിക്ക് നല്ലവനാണെന്ന് പറയുക ജീവിതത്തിന്റെ എല്ലാം നേരത്തിലും യേശും എനിക്ക് നല്ല ദൈവമായിരുന്നു എന്ന് പറയുക ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിലും ആയുഷ് നൽകി ബലം നൽകി നമ്മളെ കൊണ്ടുവന്ന കർത്താവിന് അല്പസമയങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരും മഹത്വം കൊടുത്താട്ടെ ഹാലലൂയ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നത് നേരുള്ളവർ കുചിതം എന്ന് വിശുദ്ധ ബൈബിൾ നമ്മളെ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നു അങ്ങനെയെങ്കിൽ ദൈവം തന്നിട്ടുള്ള എല്ലാ നല്ല നന്മകൾക്ക് നന്ദി പറയാം എല്ലാ നല്ല അനുഗ്രഹങ്ങൾക്ക് കർത്താവിന് നന്ദി പറയാം ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിലും ബലത്തോടെ ആരോഗ്യത്തോടെ കർത്താവിനെ ആരാധിക്കുവാൻ ദൈവ സാന്നിധ്യം അനുഭവിക്കുവാൻ ദൈവം നമുക്ക് തരുന്ന ഈ ഭാഗ്യ പദവി ഹാലലൂയ് അത് ജീവിതത്തിലെ ഏറ്റവും വലിയ പദവിയാണ് അത് തിരിച്ചറിഞ്ഞ് കർത്താവിന് അല്പസമയങ്ങൾ മഹത്വം കൊടുക്കാം ഹാലലൂയ അർഹിക്കാത്ത നന്മകളും എനിക്കേകിടും കൃപാനിതേ അർഹിക്കാത്ത നന്മകളും എനിക്കേകിടും കൃപാനിതേ യാചിക്കാത്ത നന്മകൾ പോലുമി എനിക്കേകി ഓ സ്തുതി ചേർന്ന പാഠം യാചിക്കാത്ത നന്മകൾ പോലുമി എനിക്കേകിയോടി സ്തുതി നന്ദിയോ നന്ദിയോടെ ഞാൻ സ്തുതി പാടിടും എൻ്റെ യേശു നാദാ എനിക്ക എനിക്ക നീ ചെയ്തോരോ നന്മയ്ക്കും ഇന്നു നന്ദി ചൊല്ലുന്നു ഞാ എനിക്ക എനിക്ക നീ ചെയ്തോരോ നന്മയ്ക്കും ഇന്നു നന്ദി ചൊല്ലുന്നു ഞാ എന്നെയും എനിക്കുള്ളതോക്കയും നിൻ കയ്യിൽ പറയാം എന്നെ എന്നെയും എനിക്കുള്ളതോക്കയും നിൻ കയ്യിൽ തരും നീതഞ്ഞാ നിൻ തീരു മഹത്വത്തിനാ ഇനി ജീവിപ്പാ കൃപരുൾഗാരു മഹത്വത്തിനാ ഇനി ജീവിപ്പാ കൃപരുൾഗാ ഉപവാസത്തിൻ്റെ പന്ത്രണ്ടാമത്തെ രാത്രിയിൽ നമ്മളെ തന്നെ ദൈവകരങ്ങളിലേക്ക് സമ്പൂർണമായെന്ന് സമർപ്പിക്കാം നമുക്കുള്ളതെല്ലാം ദൈവം തന്ന ദാനമാണ് നമ്മൾ അനുഭവിക്കുന്ന നന്മകളെല്ലാം കർത്താവിൻ്റെ ദാനമാണ് നമുക്ക് ഒപ്പുകൊഴുവാനൊന്നുമില്ല നമുക്ക് പ്രശംസിപ്പാനൊന്നുമില്ല 
നമുക്ക് നമ്മുടെ ക്രൂശിനെ അല്ലാതെ നമ്മുടെ കർത്താവിനെ അല്ലാതെ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി നമുക്ക് പ്രശംസിപ്പാൻ മറ്റൊന്നുമില്ല അങ്ങനെയെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ നമുക്കുള്ളതിനെല്ലാം ആ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ കരങ്ങളിലേക്ക് ഒന്ന് കൊടുത്താട്ടെ ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ എല്ലാം പറയുവാനും എല്ലാം പാടാനും എല്ലാം മഹത്വം കൊടുക്കുവാനും നമ്മുടെ യേശുവിന് മാത്രമാണ് അങ്ങനെയെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി ആലാ ആരാധനയുടെ നടുവിൽ കർത്താവിന് ചില നിമിഷങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരും സ്തുതികളോടെ എന്നെ കർത്താവ് അങ്ങയുടെ കരങ്ങളിലേക്ക് സമ്പൂർണമായി സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു എനിക്കുള്ളതെല്ലാം അവിടുത്തെ പോകയാണ് ഇന്ന് രാത്രി ഞങ്ങൾ അങ്ങേ ആരാധിക്കുന്നു എല്ലാ മഹത്വവും യേശുവേ എന്നെയും എനിക്കുള്ളത് എന്നെയും എന്നെയും എനിക്കുള്ള എന്നെയും എനിക്കുള്ളതോക്കയും നിൻ കയ്യിൽ തരുന്നിതാഞ്ഞ നിൻ തിരു മഹത്വത്തിന നിൻ തിരു മഹത്വത്തിന ഇനി ജീവിപ്പാ നന്ദിയോടെ സ്തുതി പാടിടു എന്റെ യേശു എനിക്കാരോന്നോന യേശു 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 വാരി വലിയവൻ യേശു മഹത്വം കൊടുത്താൽ യേശു യേശു വാരി അത് വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നവർ മാത്രം എന്റെ യേശു മതിയായത് ഓശു യേശു അവനാരി യേശു ഹൊറാബാസിയാലാദന ഹുരിയാദ അവിടുത്തെ മഹത്വത്തിനായി ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു അങ്ങയുടെ സാന്നിധ്യത്തിനായി ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഞങ്ങൾ വിളിച്ചപേക്ഷിക്കുന്ന നാളിൽ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടി ഉത്തരമരുളുന്നൊരു ദൈവം ഷറാഫത്തൊരുക്കി എലിയാവിനെ പോറ്റിയൊരു നല്ല കർത്താവ് ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ നമ്മളെ വഴി നടത്താൻ വിശ്വസ്തനെന്ന് വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നവർ അല്പസമയങ്ങളാധാരങ്ങളെ തുറന്ന് കർത്താവിന് മഹത്വം കൊടുത്താട്ടെ നാം ആയിരിക്കുന്ന സ്ഥലത്ത് ആ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ സാന്നിധ്യം ഇറങ്ങി വരട്ടെ പൗലോസും ഷീലാസും കാരാഗ്രഹത്തിനകത്ത് അവർ പാടി കർത്താവിനെ മഹത്വപ്പെടുത്തിയപ്പോൾ അവരുടെ ചങ്ങലകൾ അഴിഞ്ഞെങ്കിൽ അവരുടെ ബന്ധനങ്ങൾ അഴിഞ്ഞെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ ഈ ആരാധനയുടെ നടുവിൽ ഞാൻ വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവ് ചില അത്ഭുതങ്ങൾ ഇതിനെ കത്ത് ചെയ്യുന്നു ഹാലൂയ ഹാലൂയ ഇതൊരു സൂ പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോം ആണെങ്കിലും ദൈവത്തിന് ഏത് സാഹചര്യങ്ങളുടെ നടുവിലും ചലിക്കുവാൻ കഴിയും ദൈവ സാന്നിധ്യത്തിന് ഏത് നേരത്തും നമ്മളോട് ഇടപെടുവാൻ കഴിയും അങ്ങനെയെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി പരിശുദ്ധാത്മാവിന്റെ സാന്നിധ്യം ഓരി വലിയവൻ യേശു യേശു യേശുവാരി മതിയായവൻ ശബ്ദം ഉയർത്തി എന്ന് പാടാം യേശു യേശു യേശുവാരി യേശു യേശു യേശുവാരി മതിയായവൻ 
വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നവർ പാടിക്കുക എൻ ദൈവത്താൽ കഴിയാത്തത് എൻ ദൈവത്താൽ കഴിയാത്തത് ഏതുമില്ല അവന്റെ നാമത്ത തന്നാമത്ത സാധ്യമേ എല്ലാമില്ല നേരിന്റെ വഴിയിൽ നീ നടന്ന നീ ദൈവത്തോട് കൂടെ നടന്ന വന്മതിൽ പോലുള്ള പ്രശ്നങ്ങളെ എനിക്കോ മതിലുകൾ പോലെ നിന്റെ മുമ്പിൽ നിൽക്കുന്ന പ്രതിസന്ധികളെ ഇന്ന് പകലിൽ ചാടി കടക്കുവാൻ ആവശ്യമാകുന്ന ദൈവകൃപ അതിനെ മറികടക്കുവാൻ ആവശ്യമാകുന്ന ദൈവകൃപ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി നീ ജനത്തിന്റെ മേൽ പരിശുദ്ധാത്മാവ് ചെയ്യണമേ അവരുടെ മുമ്പിൽ നിൽക്കുന്ന പ്രതിസന്ധികൾ നോക്കി ഭാരപ്പെടണ്ട എനിക്കോ മതിലിനെ ഇടിച്ച് തകർത്ത കർത്താവ് ഓ നിനക്കെതിരായി നിൽക്കുന്ന ഒരു ആയുധവും എനിക്ക് ഫലിക്കുകയില്ല നമ്മളോട് കൂടെ നിൽക്കുന്ന കർത്താവിന്റെ തിരുഷാനിധ്യം നേരിന്റെ വഴി നേരിന്റെ വഴിയിൽ നടന്ന നന്മകൾ നന്മകൾ ദിനവും നൽകുമേ വിശ്വസ്ത നീതിമാ അവൻ സർവത്തിൻ നായകൻ സർവത്തിൻ നായകൻ ദൈവ വിശ്വസ്ത വിശ്വസ്ത അവൻ നീതിമാ വിശ്വസിച്ച് പാടിക്കും ദൈവത്താൽ എൻവത്താ കഴിയാത്തത് ഏതുമില്ല തന്നാമത്ത തന്നാമത്ത രാത്രിയിൽ രോഗികളായി ഭാരപ്പെടുന്ന ആരെങ്കിലും ഇതിനകത്തുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ എന്റെ യേശുവിന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ മാറാത്തതായ ഒന്നുമില്ല തന്റെ നാമം നമ്മൾ പറയുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ നമ്മുടെ മേൽ ആ സൗഖ്യത്തെ ദൈവം പകരും ഏതെങ്കിലും വിഷയത്തിനകത്ത് നിങ്ങൾ ഭാരപ്പെടുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ യേശുവിന്റെ നാമത്തെ വിളിച്ചു വിളിച്ചപേക്ഷിക്കുന്ന നാളിൽ ദൈവം നമുക്ക് ഉത്തരവരുള്ളു അങ്ങനെ എങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി രോഗ സൗഖ്യങ്ങൾ ഇതിനകത്ത് സംഭവിക്കട്ടെ ദൈവ സാന്നിധ്യം എവിടെ ഇറങ്ങിയിട്ടുണ്ടോ അവിടെ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ മഹത്വം ഇറങ്ങിയിട്ടുണ്ട് ഹാലലു ദൈവത്തെ ആരാധിക്കുന്ന കൂട്ടങ്ങൾ എവിടെയുണ്ടോ അവിടെ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ മഹത്വം ഇറങ്ങിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ എങ്കിൽ വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നവർ പറ എന്റെ യേശുവിന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ മാറാത്തതായ ഒന്നുമില്ല വൻ രോഗങ്ങൾ ഏതുണ്ട് വചനം നൽകും വിടുതൽ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി വചനത്തെ വചനം പറഞ്ഞ് കർത്താവിനുള്ള അനുഗ്രഹത്തെ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി പ്രാപിക്കുക വാചനം നൽകിയിടും വിടുതൽ യാചന കേൾക്കുന്ന വിജനമാരുഭൂമിയാത്രയിൽ ആ 
സൈന്യത്തിന്റെ നായകൻ സൈന്യത്തിൻ നായകൻ വിശ്വസ്ത വിശ്വസ്ത കഴിയാതുമില്ല തൻ്റെ നാമത തന്നാമത ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ വിശ്വസിക്കുക യേശുവിന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ മാറാത്തതായ ഒന്നുമില്ല ഇന്ന് രാത്രി ആരെങ്കിലും വേദനയോടെ നിരാശയോടെ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി ഈ മീറ്റിംഗ് അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ വിശ്വസിക്കുക വചനം നിങ്ങൾക്ക് വിടുതൽ തരും ഈ ലോകത്തിൽ ആർക്കും നമ്മളെ അമേൻ ഒരു വിടുതൽ തരുവാൻ കഴിയത്തില്ല ഈ ലോകത്തിൽ ആർക്കും പരിഹരിക്കുവാൻ കഴിയാത്ത പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾ നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ആഞ്ഞടിക്കുമ്പോൾ യേശുവിന്റെ വചനത്തെ പറഞ്ഞ് ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ വിടുതൽ പ്രാപിക്കുന്ന ഒരു അനുഭവം നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഉണ്ടാവട്ടെ ഒരു ഗാനം കൂടെ നമ്മൾ ചേർന്ന് പാടി നമ്മുടെ കർത്താവിന് മഹത്വം കൊടുക്കാൻ പോവുകയാണ് ദൈവത്തിൻ നാമത്തിൽ നാം ചേർന്നിടു സമയങ്ങളിൽ മോദമായി ധ്യാനിച്ചിട കർത്താവിന്റെ വൻ കൃപകളെ ഓർത്ത് സന്തോഷത്തോടെ ആരും ദുഃഖിച്ചിരിക്കണ്ട ആരും ഭാരപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കണ്ട നമ്മൾ വന്നിരിക്കുന്നത് സന്തോഷത്തെ തരുവാൻ കഴിയുന്ന ജീവിതത്തിനെ അർത്ഥപൂർണമാക്കി തീർക്കുവാൻ കഴിയുന്ന ഒരു യേശുവിന്റെ കരങ്ങളിലാണ് കഴിയുമെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങളുടെ കരങ്ങൾ ഉയർത്തി കർത്താവിന് ഒരു മഹത്വം കൊടുക്കാമോ ഹാലലൂയ ഒന്നിച്ചു പാടി നമ്മുടെ കർത്താവിന് മഹത്വം കൊടുക്കാം ഹാലലൂ കരങ്ങളൊക്കെ തട്ടി ചേർന്ന് ത്തിൽ നാ ചേർന്നിടു സമയങ്ങളിൽ മോദമായി ധ്യാനിച്ചിട തൻ്റെ വൻ കൃപകൾ ദിനവും മോദമാ മോദമായി ധ്യാനിച്ചിട തൻ്റെ വൻ കൃപകൾ ദിനവും ദൈവത്തിൻ നാമത്തിൽ ദൈവത്തിൻ നാമത്തിൽ നാ ചേർന്നിടു സമയങ്ങളിൽ വിശ്വാസിട തൻ്റെ വൻ കൃപകൾ ദിനവും മോദമാ മോദമായി ധ്യാനിച്ചിട തൻ്റെ വൻ കൃപകൾ ദിനവും കുന്നുകളാകം വീടിലും മഹാപർവ്വതം മാറിടിലും കുന്നുകൾ ശ്രയമേവത്തിൽ <laughs> ചേർന്നിടു സമയങ്ങളിൽ ഹാലലൂയ് മോദമായി ധ്യാനിച്ചിട തൻ്റെ വൻ കൃപകൾ ദിനവും ഓ മോദമായി ധ്യാനിച്ചിട തൻ്റെ വൻ കൃപകൾ ദിനവും സിയോനിലവൻ ഓ സിയോനിലവൻ നമുക്ക ൂലക്കല്ലാതിശ്രേഷ്ഠമൂലക്കല്ല 
പ്രതിയാശയോടെ എന്റെ കണ്ണൂനീരെല്ലാം തുടയ്ക്കും തന്റെ മാർബോട് ചേർത്തിടുമേ ഓ എന്റെ കണ്ണൂനീരെല്ലാം തുടയ്ക്കും തന്റെ വൻ കൃപകൾ ദിനവും മോദമാ മോദമൈ ധ്യാനിച്ചിടാ തന്റെ വൻ കൃപകൾ ദിനവും മോദമാ ൊരുക്കുന്നവനാളികളിൽ വാതിലുകൾ പലതും ആടഞ്ഞിടിയിലും വല്ലവൻ പുതുവാഴി ഇന്ന് രാത്രി വിശ്വസിക്കുന്ന പറഞ്ഞു നിന്റെ മുമ്പിലെ വാതിലുകൾ അടഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി ദൈവം ആ വാതിലുകളെ തുറക്കും മുമ്പിൽ പ്രതിസന്ധിയായി നിൽക്കുന്ന പ്രശ്നങ്ങളെ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി ഏഷ്യോത് മാറ്റും ആരാധിക്കുന്നവനെ തൊടുവാൻ ഈ ലോകത്തിലെ ഒരു ശക്തികൾക്കും കഴിയത്തില്ല അവനെ തകർക്കുവാൻ ഈ ലോകത്തിൽ ഒന്നിനും കഴിയത്തില്ല ഇന്ന് രാത്രി വിശ്വസിക്കുക എനിക്ക് വേണ്ടി വഴി ഒരുക്കുവാൻ കഴിയുന്ന ഒരു ദൈവത്തെയാണ് ഞാൻ ആരാധിക്കുന്നത് എനിക്ക് വേണ്ടി അത്ഭുതങ്ങളെ ചെയ്യുവാൻ കഴിയുന്ന ഒരു ദൈവത്തെയാണ് ഞാൻ ആരാധിക്കുന്നത് അല്പസമയങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും അക്കർത്ത അവന് മഹത്വം കൊടുത്താട്ടെ എനിക്ക് വേണ്ടി വഴികളെ ഒരുക്കുക എനിക്ക് വേണ്ടി പാതയെ ഒരുക്കുക കഴിയുന്ന ഒരു ദൈവം ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിലും എന്റെ കൂടെയുള്ളതാണ് എന്റെ ബലം ഹോറബാലോ ിലും <laughs> രോഗത്തിലും ആപത്തിലും രോഗത്തിലും ആവനാണേനി കഭയം ആവനാണേനി കഭയം ജീവിതത്തിൻ്റെ എല്ലാ സാഹചര്യങ്ങളിലും യേശു നമുക്ക് അഭയമായി വരും ആരെങ്കിലും നിരാശയോടെ വേദനയോടെ ഇതിനകത്തിരിക്കുന്നെങ്കിൽ കണ്ണുനീരോടെ ഇരിക്കുന്നവർ ഇതിനകത്തുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ കണ്ണുനീരിനെ തുടയ്ക്കുന്ന ഒരു ദൈവം നമ്മുടെ കൂടെ ഉണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ എല്ലാ വിഷമ സന്ധ്യകളിലും നമ്മുടെ കൂടെ ഇറങ്ങി വരുവാൻ കഴിയുന്ന ഒരു ദൈവം നമ്മുടെ കൂടെ ഉണ്ട് ഒരു നിമിഷം എല്ലാ കണ്ണുകളും നടക്കാമോ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് നിങ്ങളോടൊപ്പം അല്പ ചുരുങ്ങിയ നിമിഷങ്ങൾ ആരിപ്പോ ദൈവം ഭാഗ്യ തന്നതോർത്ത് കർത്താവിനെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു എന്റെ കൂടെയായിരുന്ന ബ്രദർ ഹാനോ 
ഞങ്ങൾ ഒന്നിച്ച് നിങ്ങളെ ശുശ്രൂഷിപ്പാൻ ദൈവം തന്ന നല്ല ഭാഗ്യ പദവിക്ക് ഞങ്ങൾ നന്ദി പറയുന്നു ഒരു നിമിഷം എല്ലാ കണ്ണുകളും നടക്കാമോ ഹാലലൂയ പിതാവേ നല്ല രാത്രിക്കായി ഇഷ്ടമോട്ടെ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ദൈവം തന്ന നല്ല നിമിഷങ്ങൾക്ക് നന്ദി പറയുന്നു എപ്പോഴും അങ്ങെ ആരാധിക്കുന്നതാണ് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ജീവിതത്തിലെ ഭാഗ്യം അങ്ങേക്ക് വേണ്ടി നിൽപ്പാൻ ആവശ്യമാകുന്ന ദൈവകൃപ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് തരണമേ ഞങ്ങളായിരിക്കുന്ന ഈ ഒരു വല്ലാത്ത സിറ്റുവേഷൻ്റെ ഒക്കെ നടുവിലും ഞങ്ങളെ സഹായിപ്പാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ ശക്തീകരിപ്പാൻ കഴിയുന്ന ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ കൃപയിൽ ഞങ്ങൾ ആശ്രയിക്കുന്നു തുടർന്നുള്ള ശുശ്രൂഷകളിലും ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ വലിയ കൃപയുണ്ടാവണമേ ഞങ്ങളോട് അവിടുന്ന് സംസാരിക്കണം ദൈവശബ്ദം കേൾപ്പാൻ ഞങ്ങളുടെ കാതുകളെ അവിടെ തുറക്കണമേ ഇതായിരിക്കുന്ന എല്ലാ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവരെയും ഞങ്ങൾ ബ്ലസ് ചെയ്ത് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു എല്ലാ മഹത്വവും ഞങ്ങൾ അങ്ങേക്ക് തരുന്നു യേശുവിൻ നാമത്തിൽ തന്നെ um thank you so much pastor satish uh, and um, yeah thank uh, my friend jeredaya i met him some time back in seattle and um it's such um, a joy to um see you all um are now worshiping the lord and also um, you know doing this fasting prayer it is such a rare thing that um, you know that uh, people of god come together for a purpose and um, truly a joy thank you so much for uh, you know inviting me and uh, i i hope to introduce myself a little bit more also weave in my story through um, um through the the sermon today and um, um if you have your bible so what i'm going to do is um i'm going to focus on the book of jeremiah so if you have your bibles to open your book to uh, jeremiah and if you have your bible um, apps um, open book to jeremiah i might be giving you a few verses here and there but i hope to do a very quick study um on uh, a, a specific uh, portion of the book of jeremiah i was told uh, jeremiah 29:11 is the uh, one of the focus verses for uh, the fasting prayer so i hope to um um you know help you help all of us and also um I just love the lord to speak to us even as we uh, begin to meditate these verses um yeah my name is sandeep as uh, sandeep pasupleti me and my wife are uh, um we're saved from a hindu background family we have our own salvation stories on how the lord met us i will um, towards the end i will tell one of the story connected to the today's sermon today so um jeremiah 29:11 right we all know the words by heart even looking without looking at the bible we can know it says for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope now we have heard it said that god loves us and has wonderful plans for our lives now it's easy to agree when we all like the plans you know but when but what do you do when the plans is not something that you expected you know we all have our stories you know for example the doctor calls i have a bad news and says i am sorry you have a disease that we need to deal with maybe that's not what we pray for you know or after wrecking a car you discover that you don't have insurance no or your boss calls you know we have decided to let you go these are all bad news is like how do you how do we deal with bad news and we cry god what's happening i have prayed so much i have prayed so much and why are things not happening as i prayed no why am i saying this right at the beginning and even during fasting prayer is also it's very very important for us to understand god's plans for us and why he does what he does is god uh acts according to our prayer or does he act according to his sovereign plan you know we are familiar with the notion that god does not always answer a prayer the way would we like to you know prayer for any length of time and sooner or later you know we are hit with a hard reality and sometimes throws questions on our mind you know what do we do when god doesn't come through for us how do we keep hope alive how do we keep our faith alive when life isn't seems to turn the wrong turn down the street and what if all that we hold dear is suddenly snatched away from us it is all familiar landmarks 
you are led to a very difficult but undeniable reality so sometimes god's plan is different from what we expected you know the passage we just read in jeremiah 29 11 is one of the most favorite verses memorized claimed in our prayer printed on new year's promise cards by many christians in fact it's one of the favorite verses in america specifically when these amazing verses are taken out of the context it becomes very favorite my plan today is for all of us as we go through by the end of today to understand god's plan for us and how wonderful god has weaved and working in history to help us understand his heart and you will find at the end of the sermon that god was weaving his plan all together through god's people so today is going to be a little bit of bible study is going to be a little bit of uh, preaching that's at the end of the day i want you to be encouraged that now all of us are in god's plan each and every one of us no matter where you are from no matter what your background is no matter what has happening each of our situations are different i want you to be encouraged at the beginning is god's plans his purposes are all over our lives so just a brief background of how we understand the book of jeremiah you know ever since solomon no in all the wisdom in the later part of solomon's life he fell down he backslided you know as a result the kingdom of israel was divided into two parts so on the northern kingdom there was israel on the southern kingdom there was judah you now both nations were prosperous materially they were really well to do everything was prospering but they were on a big time spiritual decline because god's people were rebelliously faithless you know they were not faithful to god god's covenant people they went after other gods they defiled the temple uh, by their unwillingness to repent and they oppressed one another you know they were worshiping in the temple but also they were worshiping other gods outside the temple even to the extent of participating in canaanites worst practices of child sacrifice this was the climate this was the time period under which jeremiah prophesied prophesied to israel you know there were very few kings there in fact there were two kings uh, king josiah and hezekiah who tried to reform and help god's people come back even their efforts were effortless it was not successful in order to save israel god sends them to exile to a foreign nation deportation Israel was conquered by Assyrians soon enough the Babylonian second um, wave of king will come would they would take Judah from the south and Jeremiah witnesses over these two demises of Judah and the destruction of Jerusalem the temple by the hands of the Babylonians Jeremiah even warns if you remember Jeremiah chapter 1 God would tell him hey I'm sending you to nations to build plot and also no to prophesy against they would not listen to jeremiah's words because jeremiah they thought jeremiah is actually preaching against us what we believe and it's exactly in this context when this happens and the exile happens the jeremiah writes a letter so jeremiah chapter 29 is actually a letter to the people who are in the exile and there were three things that jeremiah is telling the people in exile so number 1 god is calling his people to allegiance god is calling his people to allegiance in other words pursue godliness you know throughout the book of jeremiah if you read it god lays charge against israel at great length in this book you will be astonished oh why is god uh, telling all these things against god's people Okay, we are trying to understand the context here, so stay with me. It's a honest, hard talk that the Lord lays out with passion—a passion for His bride, because Israel was God's covenant people, which means God was wedded to Israel, and His and His heart is a heart of a, a spouse who has not been faithful to Him. 
and is flowing from this heart. If you read Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 16, I will read this out for you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 16, it says, And I will declare my judgment against them for all their evil in forsaking me. They have made offering to other gods and worship the works of their own hands. Another verse, chapter 2 verse 13. Chapter 2 verse 13 says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and duck their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Another verse for you. Chapter 2 verse 20. Chapter 2 verse 20. On every high hill and under every green tree, you lay down like a prostitute. He uses the words of language. Over and over, God interweaves this image of idolatry and adultery in order to show his people that he has taken them as his special bride. He has weaved himself to them and he has committed himself to them. And he has even put his reputation online by sharing his name with them. But they have been unfaithful. Now God's judgment comes in the form of an army this time. Who would destroy their places and take their people into exile? Move them out of their comfort zone. You know, every all through this time, when they were living, God thought that when, when the exile was happening, when the enemy would come and take them to exile, they thought God will come and deliver them. Because they have a history of instances where God delivered them. But this time it was different. You know, we might not have literal idols like they had today. But trust me, there are several idols that we are battling like addiction. Let me name a few. Like social addiction to social media. You know, more than we need. Sometimes good, not more than it. Political parties, sometimes celebrities. You know, sometimes pursuit of pleasure and comfort and finance. And even sports club can take the place of God. We have become a generation where we will do Facebook, but we will not face the book. We will do Facebook, but we will not face the book. Uncontrollable scrolling, but not reading the scrolls that God has provided us. Each of us have some degree of allegiance to these devices. You know, this is a hard teaching. But this is the language God employs to his own children. You know, survey says that because we are so addicted to our screens and our Facebook, we have become a reactive generation, a generation who wants to react to everything as a result of our habits every day. Where do we draw the line as God's people? Few questions that we need to ask to question our reality is, does God get our first and best in our lives? Does he get our best time and attention in each day? You know, when was the last time we made time to pray and read the Bible, to study the Bible? You know, people of God, as we are seeking the Lord's face at the beginning of this year, you know, in the in through this fasting prayers, let it let us revisit our woes to the Lord, like marriage woes, Lord. Are there areas in my life that I am slipping away subconsciously? Now, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 3, it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. So that's the first thing. God is calling his people to allegiance because there are forces in this world. There are so many impulses in this world which will try to get us away. And it's a good thing for us right at the beginning of this year to check where our hearts are. The Bible says where the treasure is, there your heart will be. So that's the first thing I wanted to. And this is a message throughout the book of Jeremiah. Coming to the second one. God is calling his people for resilience. We saw God is calling his people for allegiance. The second point, God is calling his people for resilience. One is God is asking you to pursue godliness. But the second one is God is asking all of us to pursue goodness. 
we will come to its plan in jeremiah 29 11 was already re- revealed right before jeremiah 4 to 7 and this is exciting because you will see the plan of god for god's people all over and how it impacted the children of israel and us as christians so 29 verse 4 to 7 and i'm going to read this out for you for thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exile whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage and that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. And pray to the Lord on its behalf, for it is for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Another word for welfare is the word peace. For in its peace you will find this peace. You know, God's people who were exiled in Babylon, they were away from their home, away from their regular life, you know, away from the temple. In fact, their temple got destroyed. But they were they would carry religious activities in those duties and also live a double life. But God destroyed the very thing that they were using as an excuse to go away from him, forsake him. For they thought God would deliver them like the way he did with Egypt and the other wars. But this was different. And their condition was as a result of their continuous centuries of sin, forsaking Yahweh and worshipping another. God was very clear, very clear. You know, in fact, if you read a few verses, it says, God, that they are going to stay. Verse 10, it says, For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed from Babylon, I will visit you. Okay. You know, Daniel. We all know about Daniel's story. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. It was during the exile time that Daniel and his all his exile would get this letter from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29 was a letter sent to exile. Why was Daniel set apart? Why was Daniel a blessing over others? Because they were influenced by one of these documents. So when Daniel learned that this document has been signed, he went into this house. In fact, he went to the upper room and prayed to the Lord. So Daniel, so the 70 years time that we are talking about, what happened during those 70 years is something very exciting. And I wanted to all of us to listen to this because God used their exile for his glory. So listen to the seven things that God did during the 70 years when God gave them instructions to build houses. And God said, for I know the plans towards you, their plans to prosper you not for evil. The first thing that happened was the grip of idolatry was finally broken. The very thing of idolatry, they, God took them to a nation where these idols were really taking big time place. That was the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened was God established a presence among the Babylonians. You know, consider Daniel and his friends. The way these young Hebrew people, they reminded of the true God right in the midst of them. God established them, you know, in the place. The third thing that happened was God raised up Daniel to a position of great influence. You know, Daniel and his three friends were taken to Babylon in the first deportation. And immediately, God put them in a place where they could influence even the king. In fact, he would change three kings till his old age. The fourth thing which happened was Nebuchadnezzar, who was a Babylonian king, he became a believer in God. Daniel chapter 4 tells this amazing story of how Nebuchadnezzar, having become puffed with pride, lost his mind, he ate grass. You know, God teaches him. God tells him, who is the boss? Who is the boss? This would not have happened without influence of Daniel and his godly friends. The fifth thing which happened was the Jews lived in peace in Babylon. It is a matter of, you know, 
in historical documents say that the people who were in Babylon, you know, uh, the Jews who were in Babylon, they were given religious freedom to develop their own community. Just like the way, you know, we are in an alien nation, but we are given the freedom to develop our own community. Okay, listen to this. This is exciting. For instance, you know, it was during the 70-year period, the most important part of the Old Testament documents were written. Talk about 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, 2nd Chronicles, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, parts of the Psalms. They were written during this time. It is also the first time that the Jews began to put together the scriptures that we are holding in our hands. Before the exile, there was no such formal collection of documents. The beginning of the collection, they trace to the Babylonian exile. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Judaism became a worldwide religion during the 70-year period. Why is this important? Because, you know, when the, when the Jews, you know, the biggest Jewish diaspora happened during this time. You know what they did? They established synagogues. Why is this important? Because later when Paul and apostles, when they preached the gospel to every place, the first place they visited was a synagogue. I know there was there is a synagogue in Kerala because I went there for my visit. The very first synagogue he would go, they would establish the place. The seventh thing is beautiful. Daniel and his contemporaries introduced Bible prophecies to the learned class in Babylon. Why is this important? Daniel and his contemporaries introduced Bible prophecies to learn to learn uh, to the learned class. You know, we read in. Uh, we know the Christmas story. We just out of a Christmas story, right? We all know about Magi's. Where did this Magi's come from? They, they were astrologers, right? In the book of Daniel, we, there is a frequent mention of a group. They were called the astrologers, Chaldeans, or Magi's. In this Babylonian course. You can read that in several parts. Daniel 1, Daniel 2, Daniel 4, and Daniel 5. And if you check out Daniel chapter 5, verse 11, you know, you will discover that Daniel was actually named the chief of these people. He was heading them. He taught them how to interpret dreams, read the stars. Only God could have orchestrated something like that. This does not mean that they, all the Magi's were believers. No. The point I'm trying to drive is, it comes very clearly that Daniel had a huge influence on all of them. Huge influence. Where did they come from? Why am I saying this to you, God's children? God wants us to be resilient. God wants us to be resilient. That means God does not, just because we are in a different nation, doesn't mean that everything comes to a grinding halt. God wants us to work towards its goodness. God even tells that you got to pray for the welfare of the nation that you are in. I hope during our fasting prayers, we pray for America. We pray for the nations that we are. Pray for the leaders. Because in its peace, God says, you will find your peace. Why is this important for prayer? Because if you read verse 12 in Jeremiah 29, when we do these things, God says, not only that we have plans for it, it says, verse 12 says, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you Seek me with all your heart. Even our prayer answers depend on how we pray for these things. God's people, God is calling us into a time of even praying for the very nation we are. We are called to be agents of God's righteousness in all place to which he has called us to. Notice all these are verbs, action. He says the word verse 4 to 7. You see the action was word build, plant. Take, give, seek, pray. You know, the Jews who were there in exile, they would think, oh, we have to fight. We have to protest. We have to war. We have to react. In other words, Jeremiah is calling, see, I have set you this, uh, you know, Jeremiah is, you, Jeremiah, here, here is where Jeremiah's calling comes in. I have only not only called you to uh, pluck things, but I have called you to build things. Seek the welfare. You know, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 44 says, 
you have heard this that it was said that you shall love your neighbor and you hate your enemy but i say to you love your enemies pray for those who persecute you jesus calls us to love the nation which we are in thirdly finally god is calling his people for vigilance god is calling his people for allegiance god is calling his people for resilience and thirdly god is calling his people to be vigilant pursue godliness pursue goodness but pursue also watchfulness now the lord warned the children of israel children of judah about false prophets you know many prophecies in the name of god there were people who did not take time to check the word received from god so much that when god's people god's word came through jeremiah they took it offensive you will find that they even uh, they beat up jeremiah they put him in jail they were about to even kill him what happened when what happens when what does this mean to us when god's when, when no what happens when god's word becomes of to us they they tend to pick teachers and prophets who will teach them something else other than the bible you know bible calls it itching ears they would want to listen what they want to hear when it is the other way around you know for this you know jeremiah cha- let me read jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33 to 34 jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33 to 34 this is how god helps up helps them to counter the, all the wrong things that he has never told god will never speak anything out of the bible the bible will never contradicts itself for here is where god helps us for this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days declares the lord i will put my law within them and i will write it on their heart and i will be their god and they shall be my people and no longer shall each one teach his neighbors and each his brother saying know the lord for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest declares the lord for i will forgive their iniquities and i will remember their sins no more jesus said in the new testament that my sheep will hear my voice my sheep how can we recognize god's voice today how can we know it is right how do we know if it is specific teaching is from god's word no we have to know our bible in the first place you know today we are facing a generation who do not know god's word i was surprised on the other day when i was preaching to a few young people i was preaching on the book of jonah there were 10 of them and i all of a sudden before i started my sermon i asked how many of you know the story of jonah two people out of 10 raised their hands children of god the devil wants to keep our children from not knowing god's stories there is a reason why he will do that you know bible stories are history but you know history is that's why it's called history is his story it's the story of god and when our story meets his story that's where life starts because all that while we are dead in our sin when we meet we know that god we are dead in our sin but it's only jesus that points us to the right path you know when the john the baptist baptized jesus we know the picture that you know god they god spoke there was a light god says this is my child it's as if god is telling listen people of the earth he is the point of life learn from him because jesus is our example you know there is a reason why bible is very blunt about reality bible does not sugar coat any of the stories if you and i have to write our own stories we will eliminate some of our stories some of our shameful dirty stories things but the bible never sugar coats you know why because god gives us deliverance 
right in the midst of reality he doesn't take us away from reality in the midst of reality he shows himself but it is our responsibility to study god's word which is real to us god is calling us to a place of watchfulness that we it's our responsibility to study the word of god why is it important this might not be a sermon that you would expect during fasting prayer you know normally a, a lot of promises why is it important as god's people to understand god's judgment because it helps us to appreciate the work of christ on the cross because the judgment that fell upon god's people it fell upon him that he took it on the cross for us that we will never ever abuse we will learn not to abuse the grace of god in our lives there's a beautiful song which says if we never ever take our eyes off this place which is the cross we will never ever take light of his grace god is actively working in all our lives in all our believers you know and he is partnering with each and every one of us to reach out to his people i want to end with a very small incident in my life when we came to know the lord in the year 2000 um 2003 my mom lost her eyesight she became completely blind the black fungus which we heard during the covid she had 30 years back doctor gave up hope we are unbelievers we don't know who christ is all we know is christ means there's a church people go but we were all unbelievers she went to the hospital in the first first floor in, in an apollo hospital in chennai by the time they declared okay uh, you, you you need to go through an operation she went from the first floor to the ground floor right on the steps in the middle everything went black we didn't know what happened mom they said mom will come in a week's time but they didn't say that she will come after two months that was my state soon enough one of our christian friends heard about our story from another state in hyderabad they came to chennai he bought a pastor with him and they gifted as a bible this bible we are hindus we don't know who god is so we thought this was a lucky charm and this went below the pillow my mom is blind by that time all bandaged all eyes closed they said she will not get her eyes right how can god speak to a blind woman in this state right one day in the hospital my my father in the front of uh, a christian friend told that she is blabbering something uh, brother is blabbering something uh, brother vijay rajavardhan i don't know who the christian friend my dad spoke to he told she's been telling the word luke 147 luke 147 luke 147 she's blabbering it's luke 147 in telugu maybe in malayalam and tamil bible but it's luke 148 in english bible so they began to search luke 147 chapter which is not there so the christopher let's search luke chapter 1 was 48 luke chapter 1 was 48 Okay, this is a song of mary which says for i have remembered the low state of a handmaid from now on all generations will call me blessed for now i have remembered the low state of our handmaid the bible has around 36061 verses what is the probability of god speaking one verse out of that this must be god why am i saying this to you when this verse came it was a ray of hope for us who do not believe in the lord and i'll tell you when the time when this verse came because my dad thought life is gone mama's eyesight is gone life is ended no peace no point of reference he did not tell us because he was contemplating suicide he wanted to kill my mother he wanted to strangle i'm the only son to my parents he wanted to strangle me with a towel it was exactly at this time that he came searching for us 
why am I saying this story to you, God's people? And what is it relation to what we studied in the book of Jeremiah? Because God has placed you in a place where somebody needs your presence. If not for the Christian friend, if not, maybe the Christian friend did not know how to preach. Maybe he did not know theology. Maybe he did not know. All he knew was to get a Bible and gift it to this God's people. Trust me, friends. You are not there by mistake in the place where you are. God, in your area of influence, maybe in your neighborhood, maybe in your work influence, maybe in your friend circles, somebody needs to see Jesus. 99.9% .9 of the time, you, Jesus in you, Jesus in me is the only Jesus that they will ever see. The only Bible that they will ever read is that Bible translated into your own life. Somebody said, what is the best translation, brother? You know, Rick Warren said, the best translation is when the Bible is translated into your life. God has not placed you where you are by mistake. That he has placed you for a reason. And you will come. And when you know the truth, trust me, two things will happen. And I can tell you, maybe I might be wrong, but maybe take it as a prophecy. Either God will bring that person to you or God will take the person, you, God will take you to that person. Recently, when I, I will end with this one. Recently, I, we came back from India for four weeks and I challenged myself. I said, God, I will not make plans for myself. I don't want to see places, but lead me to that person that you want me to go. Soon enough, a friend would call. Hey, I'm in, in, I, I heard that you came. Can we meet? I said, let's meet right now. I'm coming for lunch. I didn't hesitate. While during our conversation, I asked about a specific family. Where is this family? It's been seven years that I've seen them. He said, you know what? They stay two streets away from where we are. You know, let's go. He said, no, 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 no. Don't go. Because they have not been seeing people much. He said, it's okay. Tell them that I have come and I'm going to knock on the door. Soon enough, I went to this home. And it's a family, Christian family. They've been through tough times. And I went into their home. 15 minutes, they were not comfortable. But on the 20th minute, they said, Brother, for the last two years, last two years, nobody came to our house. Nobody prayed for us. Nobody even knocked at the door from the church. Why am I saying this, brothers? When you are ready, God will take you to the people. God will use your whatever skills you have, whatever you have to meet the people. And I, can, I have so many stories like that, that God will use you for his glory. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you your future and hope. That's what declares, says the Lord. Pastor Sadish, I don't know if you want to pray and lead us through a um, time of prayer. After this, I'm done with my sermon. And I hope the book of Jeremiah speaks to you. And I hope this Jeremiah 29, 11 throws more light on how God is going to use all of us this year. He's planning to call us for allegiance. Planning to call us for resilience. And third is God is planning to call us for vigilance. And God's May God bless you. May God be with you. As, and may God lead you throughout this year and then the coming years. Amen. Yeah, so I told you about my mother. Um, when this happened, there was another. So one was a voice from the Lord. There was another dream which came. So I used to, when my dad was working in Hyderabad, I used to go to a painting class where I used to draw a picture. My mother told me, now this is a blind woman telling his son that she saw, she didn't know it was a dream or a vision. But this is what she explained when she, she became blind. She said there was a, the hospital is there, there's a room. And in the room, they, uh, at the door, there was a person wearing a long rope. There were sheep down. There was something like a shepherd's stick. She didn't know, it was, you know, the picture where Jesus is a shepherd and he's holding one sheep. She said she couldn't see the face, but it was quite bright. And she put a hand came from him 
and touched her head. And when he touched her head, it was like, my mother is still blind, but she was supposed to die. So black fungus, which we know recently, came 30 years back, but there was no medicine for that. So that's why the doctors declared she has to, uh, she will die, please take her home. The doctors called again very close to that date and says, you know what, they are actually developing a medicine, but it is not available in India. It's available in Hong Kong. Somehow the Lord helps us. She gets a drip. And uh, uh, this is a medicine which has to go into the saline for eight hours. She had to take 50 of it, 2003, 800 rupees, I remember, per bottle. And that is a bank employee. It's equal to close to 50,000 rupees or more per bottle. She had to take 50 of it. God amazingly provided. Now, we didn't know. We still didn't know the Lord. So, soon enough, the medication happens. Now, who, we, who is this God? Why, why did we come to Jesus? Because all the while, we were going to Jesus. We were going to other idols. But who is this God who's trying to communicate to us? Became so curious. My dad took the Bible which was under the pillow, started reading God's word. Faith began to build him. He started listening to the stories and he began the stories. Now, we don't know. We were in Chennai. We, my mother tongue is Telugu. We came to Chennai for studies. So we don't know Christians there because we were stay away from Christians. So the only church we know was the one near the US consulate where there was a typical Anglican church which had a... Well, so we go and sit there on a Monday, I guess. Monday, it is not on a Sunday. And we sit in the pew and we don't know what to come again. How do I speak to this God? Should we just keep quiet? There's nobody. There's no priest there. But God amazingly bought one woman who used to go to an Assemblies of God church. She just came there on that day to pray. She was sitting in the front. She's still alive. Her name is Manjula. She told me that on that day, she heard a voice, very distinct voice saying, get up, stand up, turn. There is a family sitting behind. I want you to go. That's all the instructions. There are no detailed instructions. Go and meet that family. Soon enough, she comes, speaks to us, knows our condition. One Christian led us to a church. And that is church led us to a prayer hall. And then... We are suddenly introduced to a whole family of God just because one person listened to God's instructions. Trust me, when God begins to use you, when you, when you know God's plan, God will take you to places. Soon enough, you know, we were introduced to church and uh, my mother is still blind. Uh, and recently, my grandma passed away. Uh, she's a grandma's cousin. She was staying with my mother for almost 30 years. And I want you to hear this. This is an amazing story because I haven't been to my country uh, for seven years. After seven years, I got a chance to go to my country in the month of December. This grandma, of whom I'm speaking about, she was a huge uh, devotee of a uh, lot of other gods. She's like a worship leader. Just like our brother sang the song, when she sings, all the people sing. Any married couple, they'll have to go through the puja through her, into their home. Such was the influence of this lady, this Padmavati. Soon enough, when my mother lost her, I said she began to see us. She began to watch our lives. We didn't tell the gospel to her. She only watched our lives. She was a Babylonian, true Babylonian sitting in our home. She saw our lives. She heard the word of God. Soon enough, she gave her life to God. For 30 years, my mother is blind. She was the Bible reader. She was the song worship leader for you know all the Christian songs. She used to read it and sing it for her. She doesn't know the tune of the songs, but she still sings the songs. She was in love with Jesus. She was in love with God. When I went last time, my in the month of December, the first thing she tells me is that my father has not called me yet. 92 years old. 92 years old, she's a woman. She told me my father has not called me. I knew that time in my heart that she didn't have much time, but she was in love with God. There is a video I recorded. I will tell you the translation of the song she was singing. I didn't know whether she realized it or not. The song said like this, 
I want to see my Savior's face on Mount Zion. I want to see. That's the, how the song went. We saw her. We took videos. All the grandchildren were there. And um, we had our Christmas together. She had a nice Christmas meal. She had a nice one full chicken Monday uh, all by herself. You know, 92 years old. She still has a black, white hair from the top of her head to, the, to her hip. Long hair. We finished our trip. We landed in US on the 31st. I'm in the plane and I'm switching on my phone. The first message I get from my father is, she's no more. It was as if she was waiting for me. And thank you, brother, for allowing me to say this story of mine because she was a Babylonian sitting in our home where we believed in God. Maybe there are unbelieving family members you know. Maybe there are loved ones you know. Trust me. God will touch them. I have a 55-year-old Periyappa, like my father's brother, who tore three Bibles. He tore three Bibles. A true Babylonian. Three Bibles. And he used every abusive language for, for Christians. I don't know this. I forgot. But I was told that when I was 12 years old, I challenged him that there will be a day that you will accept the Lord. I say, even if my mother does not get eyesight, you will accept the Lord. My father told me that 55 years old, because of alcohol, his liver spoiled. And he said the Lord's Prayer in the very same room where he put me and challenged that you will, you will know your Christ is waste. And, and I, I was not there. And these, these news get to me. I was not there when his death was there. My brother, cousin told me that when his BP levels were fluctuating, all of a sudden, nobody prompted him. He lifted up his hands as if he was seeing something. He's called, Eshu, Eshu, Eshu. And after that, their wife brought all the other gods in front of him, asking him to pray. He did not pray. He gave a sarcastic smile as if I know the truth. I believe he is to be with the Lord. I'm telling you, God, you have no clue how the Lord is so actively involved. Maybe he's just waiting for you to take that step to meet that person who does not know the Lord. You don't need to preach the gospel. They themselves will ask the question. All you have to do is go connect with people. Because we think that we are waiting for a big prayer. We are waiting for a big crusade to happen. That's not going to work out in the next years, I know. It's going to take God's people out of their closet to go and meet the neighbor, to go and meet your family member. Maybe you have to take your phone, see the contact person that you have not called and just get in touch with them. And Tim Keller says this, you have to be long enough and stay with the person, walk that mile as a friend because a day will come when their shirt will tear and they will see, hey, we both are in the same situation. How come your shirt tore? And how come my shirt tore? And how come yours is intact? That's where you tell. It's because of my Lord that he kept me together. He kept me alive. Otherwise, I should have been destroyed a long time back. People of God, may God lead you to that place. God has not kept you there for something. God has kept you there for a reason. And may God flow through your lives. Amen.